by the end of this lecture, you're going to know how to test a component's inputs as well as its outputs. And you're also going to know how to interact with a component's view. Now for this lecture, we're going to continue with our example of testing a login component, but we're going to change our component into a more complex version with inputs, outputs, and a domain model and a form. Let's take a look at the login component. So you can see at the top, we have a domain model, a class called user, which just has an email and password properties. Then in our login component, we have a simple form, which has email, password, and then we have a login button which when pressed calls the function login and passes it the email and the password. And then the button itself is actually disabled if the enabled property is true. And the enabled property is an input property. And then if you take a look at the login function, what this does is if both the email and password has been passed in, then we emit something, we emit something on the logged in output property. And what do we admit? We emit a new user. And just a quick note, just to pay attention to this, that we're not actually using the auth service anymore in this example. Now, if we take a look at our test suite file, we've bootstrapped it a little bit. So we have, we're using a test bed. We're configuring our testing module with just a login component. We grab the fixture. We then grab the component. And then the key thing here is we're also grabbing references to a few elements using the fixture.debug element.query methods, which we've covered in the previous lectures. So we're grabbing a reference to the button itself and to the input email control and to the input password control. Let's so go back into our logging component. We have an input here, the enabled property. And that's the first thing we're going to learn how to test. We're going to learn how to test inputs on our components. So in order to test this, we need to be able to change the enabled property on our logging component. And then we also want to check that changing the enabled property disables and enables our login button. And solving the first one is actually really, really easy just because we've decorated this property with input doesn't change the fact that it's still just a simple property, which we can change just like any other property on a class. So if we were to create a test spec for this, let me just create one in the test spec file here. So I've created a test spec for setting enable to false disables the submit button. And you can see here to actually set the input property enabled to false, all we have to do is call component.enabled and just change it to whatever value that we want. That's it. And just remember, we're grabbing a reference to the component from our fixture in the before each function. And to actually check that the button has been disabled, we need to check the disabled property of the button's DOM element. So to do that, we add this expectation at the bottom. So we expect the submit element, which is, a, which is the button itself. We grab the native element, which is the DOM element for that button. We then check the disabled property and we expect that to be true, to be a, a true value. And if it's disabled, it means the button is disabled itself. But then also we need to take into account the issue of change detection. Just because we've changed the enable property to false, we actually need to trigger a change detection run in order for this to change the views button to be disabled. So we just need to do a fixture dot detect changes there. And we've covered that in a previous lecture also. So now when I run this, we can see it passes and we have that test spec passing. So that's how we test inputs on components. How do we actually test outputs? Now, testing outputs is somewhat trickier, especially if you want to test from the view. Now, firstly, let's see how we can track what gets emitted by the output event and add some expectations for it. So I'm going to add another test spec at the bottom here. 
And what I'm saying in this test spec is what I'm testing in this test spec is that entering email and password emits a login event. So the first thing I do is I just create a user variable, just something I can store a user object in. I then subscribe to the output event. So remember logged in, if we go back to the login component, logged in is an output property, an output event property, and is an instance of event emitter. And then an event emitter is essentially an observable which we can subscribe to. And then everything that gets emitted on this observable, we're just storing here on the local user variable. So as soon as something gets emitted on the component.logged in, we store it on the local user variable. And then we can just add some simple expectations on our user variable. So we can check the user email equals some value and that the user password equals some value. Okay, that's how we can perhaps check to see that the user object equals some value, but how do we actually trigger an event to be fired? And we could actually call the components login function ourselves, but for the purposes of this lecture, we want to trigger the function from the view, from the template code itself. Now, firstly, let's just set some values to our email and password input controls in the view. We've already got references to both of these fields in our setup function, so we just set the values on it. Now we can just set the value of the login input control like this. So we get the native element, which is a DOM element, DOM element, sorry, and we set the value to whatever value that we want. And I'm going to do the same for the password element under ooh, underneath. In fact, let me put that top of the test spec file here. And next we trigger a click on the submit button, but we want to do this after we've subscribed to our observable. So we make sure that our observable subscription is in the line above and in the line below, we want to trigger a click event. Now we trigger events on elements by calling the trigger event handler function and we can pass it which event that we want to trigger. And the next parameter is the event object we want to pass in. So we actually don't need to pass in any event object for this. We just literally just want to trigger a click event. So this is how we do it. Now, an important thing to realize here is that triggering this event, this click, essentially, if we go back to login component, this triggers this login function here. So we're essentially clicking this button which is then calling this login function. And then this login function, we are emitting a new user object on the logged in observable. And the important thing to realize about this is that essentially this is synchronous. So as soon as we call this function here, this function is called above it. And this stores the user object in our user variable, okay? So if we run this now, we'll see what happens. And we can see, yep, excellent, it's passed. Now let me show you why it's important, the ordering of these functions. If I put this after it, and now I try to run our tests, you see it fails. It's seeing cannot read property email of undefined. Essentially here, we're trying to check that user.email is equal to something, user at this point is undefined, so it's giving us this error. That's because by the time we, on line 39, as soon as we emit this click handler, it executes all the logic in the login component, emits the event on the logged in event, but because we haven't already subscribed on it, we're not storing that on the user object. We actually have to have the subscribe above, the trigger event handler there, so that when this gets called, We've already set up the callback function and we're gonna store the, the user that, get, that gets emitted locally on our user variable. Like so. So in summary, we can test inputs by just setting values on a component's input properties. And we can also test outputs by subscribing to an event emitters observable and storing the emitted values on local variables.
Now, in combination with the previous lectures and the ability to test inputs and outputs, we should now have all the information we need in order to test components in Angular. In the next lecture, we're going to take a look at how we can test directives.